While not thought to be directly related to modern Valentine's Day traditions, the beginnings of celebrating love of a sort in February date back to the Romans. The Feast of Lupercalia was a pagan fertility and health festival observed from February the 13th through the 15th that was celebrated at least as far back as 44 BCE, the year Julius Caesar was assassinated. Some historians believe it goes back even further, though with possibly a different name. Connected to the Roman god Lupercus, the equivalent of the Greek god Pan, the festival was originally supposed to be about shepherds and bringing health and fertility to their sheep and cows. When it became more ingrained into Roman culture, it additionally celebrated Lupa, the she-wolf who nursed the legendary founders of Rome, Romulus and Remus, to health. Religious offerings happened at the cave on Palatine Hill, the place where Rome was thought to have been founded. The ceremonies were filled with animal sacrifices, the wearing of goat skins, and nudity. Priests would lead sacrifices of goats and young dogs, animals who were thought to have a strong sexual instinct. Afterwards, a feast would occur with lots of wine flowing. When everyone was fat and happy, the men would shed their clothes, drape the goatskins from their earlier sacrifice on their naked bodies, and run around the city striking naked women. As Plutarch described, Lupercalia, of which many write that it was anciently celebrated by shepherds and was also some connection with the Arcadian Lycaea, at this time many of the noble youths and of the magistrates run up and down through the city naked for sport and laughter, striking those they meet with shaggy thongs. And many women of rank also purposefully get in their way and, like children at school, present their hands to be struck, believing that the pregnant will thus be helped in delivery and the barren to pregnancy. It has also been speculated that there was matchmaking that went on during the feast, akin to what people did at festivals during the Middle Ages. Whether the original feast had it or not, later young men would draw names of young women randomly pairing up one another during the feast. If the pairing was agreeable, a marriage, or just more likely in some cases a hookup could be potentially arranged. If not, well, they broke up. As the years went by, the Feast of Lupercalia was celebrated less by the higher class and the aristocratic, and enjoyed almost exclusively by the working class. In fact, there are references to the wealthy insulting one another by telling each other to go and attend the Feast of Lupercalia. In the 5th century, Pope Hilary tried to get the festival banned due to it being a pagan ritual and being unchristian. At the end of the 5th century, approximately 496 AD, Pope Galatius I did end up banning it. In a long letter sent to all Roman nobility who wanted the festival to continue, he stated, If you assert that this rite has salutary force, celebrate it yourselves in the ancestral fashion. Run nude yourselves that you may properly carry out the mockery. Pope Galatius also established a much more Christian celebration and declared it would be honored on February the 14th, a feast in which St. Valentine would be patron saint. Between the 2nd and 8th centuries, the name Valentine was actually rather common since it translated from Latin meaning strong or powerful. Scattered throughout the Christian religion over the last 2,000 years, there have been a dozen different Valentines who have drawn mention, including a pope during the 9th century, but was only pope for two months. It seems the Valentine that Pope Galatius dedicated a feast to may have been a composite of two or three different men. You see, he never made it clear who exactly he was trying to honor, and even the Catholic Church today isn't sure. One of the Valentines lived in the 3rd century and was beheaded under the rule of Emperor Claudius, alleged by some to be because he illegally married Christian couples. Claudius, as did other emperors before him, believed that soldiers fought better and were more loyal if they were single and had no wife to return home to, so he banned soldiers from getting married. Another account speaks of a Valentine being killed in the Roman province of Africa because he wouldn't give up being Christian in the 4th century. Yet another was the Bishop of Interamna in Italy during the 3rd century. He was beheaded. Back to 496 AD, Pope Galatius I instituted the feast in which St. Valentine would be the patron saint, which some have conjectured was meant as a replacement for Lupercalia, as co-opting pagan rituals to turn them Christian has been a time-honored practice of the Catholic Church. Whatever the motivations, Galatius' feast didn't really catch on, and no such holiday was commonly celebrated in the middle of February for the next thousand years or so until the 14th century. It should be noted that while Pope Galatius did ban Lupercalia and proposed a new holiday, it is thought by many historians to be relatively unrelated to modern Valentine's Day in that it seems to have had nothing to do with love. For instance, it has been speculated that it was simply a feast of purification. So what about the more recent direct genesis of Valentine's Day? Well, this began with Geoffrey Chaucer, who is more known as the writer of the Canterbury Tales. 
However, he also wrote other things, such as a 700-line poem in 1382 called The Parliament of Fowls, written in honor of the first anniversary of King Richard II of England and Anne of Bohemia's engagement. This poem is generally considered to include the first explicit Valentine's Day love connection ever written, with one of the lines reading, translated, For this was St. Valentine's Day, when every bird of every kind that men could imagine comes to this place to choose his mate. While some scholars believe Chaucer invented the Valentine's Day love connection that was previously not mentioned in any writings that have survived to this day, it may well have been that he simply helped popularize the idea. Around the same time Chaucer was penning his poem, at least three other notable authors, Otton de Granson, John Gower, and Pardo from Valencia, were also referencing St. Valentine's Day and the mating of birds in their poems. Whatever the case, the idea of Valentine's Day being a day for lovers caught on, with an early Valentine being written by Marjorie Bruce in 1477 to John Paston, who she called my right well-beloved Valentine. Over a century later, Shakespeare was writing about Valentine's Day in, among other works, Hamlet with this line. Tomorrow is St. Valentine's Day, all in the morning bedtime, and I a maid at your window to be your Valentine. Fast forward to around the 18th century, and the idea of exchanging love note cards on Valentine's Day started to become extremely popular in Britain, first handmade, then produced commercially initially called Mechanical Valentines. This tradition of exchanging love notes on Valentine's Day soon spread to America. Esther A. Howland, whose father ran a large book and stationery store, received a Valentine and decided this would be a great way to make money, so was inspired to begin mass-producing these cards in the 1850s in the United States. Others followed suit. Since then, the holiday has steadily grown to today when it is an absolute marketing and money-making machine, second only to Christmas and money spent by consumers. Further, according to the Greeting Card Association, more than 25% of all cards sent each year are Valentine's Day cards, about 1 billion cards each year. In the 1980s, the diamond industry decided it wanted its cart and began running marketing campaigns promoting Valentine's Day as a day to give jewelry to show you really loved someone instead of just sending cards and chocolates. This was obviously a very successful campaign. So this year, on Valentine's Day, when you have your hands full of roses, chocolates, and Hallmark cards for your Valentine, you'll know who to thank. Pope Galatius banning a rather fun-sounding naked, drunken pagan ritual, the beheading of a guy for supposedly marrying people, Geoffrey Chaucer, and his parliament of fowls, and of course, greeting cards companies. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. For more from me, why not subscribe to another channel I do called Highlight History. I'm going to link to that below. And as always, thank you for watching.